part of the reason why biotechnology has been restricted to kind of just a handful of people so far is because um, it's really expensive, right? So I'm a founder of a biotech company. Um, we started the company on actually not very much money. But you know, by and large, if you want to start a biotech company, the way you do that is by raising about $5 million in venture financing. And, um, and so I look at you know, friends who are like in the web industry, and they get to start their companies for $100,000. And there's a lot more people who have access to $100,000 than people who have access to $5 million. And so how is it that we can, how do we lower the barriers of entry into biotechnology so that anybody can start you know, a biotech company just like, you know, by and large, a lot of people can start internet companies these days, right? And so one of the things we're seeing now is a democratization of access to the tools of biotechnology. And that's because things are getting cheaper, they're getting easier, they're disseminating more broadly. So for example, in uh, December of last year, I had the privilege of going and visiting a school in India. And these are folks who got into synthetic biology, into biological engineering, and they were interested in building a lab for themselves where they could do some work. And so they didn't have a lab already. They didn't have the money to go purchase a bunch of equipment from fancy um, equipment sellers. So they said, okay, well, we want to make a sterile hood. We're going to go get some pieces of acrylic. We're going to go take a HEPA filter from a car, and we're going to build ourselves a sterile hood in which we can do our experiments. And they posted photos online and posted step-by-step -step instructions and a materials list. And that's how um, they were able to build their sterile hood. And they didn't stop there. They were actually able to build an incubator for growing cells at a fixed temperature. They were able to grow to make a centrifuge and a microscope. You know, kind of some of the basic lab equipment that you might need if you're interested in hacking on biology, right? Um, and the really cool thing is that these folks, they weren't actually scientists and engineers. These were actually artists. These were student artists at the Shishli School of Art and Design and, and Technology. And they just said, you know, Biology is this really cool medium for doing art. How do we, you know, get involved, right? Um, and so, and they set out and built themselves a functional lab over the course of a summer for, you know, on the order of hundreds of dollars. 